Hi and welcome in this new video. My name is Mark Lamarty, Head of Customer Education at Aston Mer, and I'm super excited to see you for this one as you will discover how to integrate the popular DBT workflow Jeffle Shop with DuckDB using Cosmos on Airflow. So without further ado, let's begin. The first step is to go on the following link in order to install the Astro CLI. So if you don't know what the Astro CLI is, think of it as a free open source command line interface so you can set up your local development environment for Airflow following best practices. If you go on that website, you click on install the CLI and then you pick your operating system and you follow the instructions. It is pretty straightforward. Once you have the Astro CLI, you can go to the Astronomer Cosmos GitHub repository. From there, you have all the files and folders, as well as the readme, but most importantly, you can access the documentation. So if you click on that link, you will land on that page, and from there, you have everything you need to get started with Cosmos. I recommend you to take a look at this documentation, but if you scroll down a little bit, you will see the example usage with Jeffel Shop project. And if you click on the Jeffel Shop project right here, this actually leads to the previous project, which is archived for now, as you can see here. And that's why we're going to use the Jevel shop on DuckDB. So don't hesitate to click on that link and you will end on the corresponding repo. From there, this is the DBT workflow that we will orchestrate using Cosmos on Airflow. So now we have everything. Let's set up our Airflow environment with the Astro CLI. The first step is to create a folder, which is Astronema Cosmos in my case, but feel free to use whatever name you want. And then in the terminal, you can run the command astro dev init in order to initialize your local Airflow environment. And as you can see on the left, the Astro CLI has automatically generated some files and folders so that I have a fully functional Airflow environment following best practices. Once we have that, the next step is to set up Cosmos. For that, I recommend you to look at the documentation, but let's do it together. Open the Docker file and then put the following line in it. This line allows you to set up a Python virtual environment where you will install dbt. Indeed, dbt might have some dependencies that will conflict with other dependencies that Airflow needs. So that's why we prefer to install dbt within a Python virtual environment so you don't end up with conflict errors. One important thing to notice here is that we install the adapter dbt-duckdb because our dbt workflow interacts with DuckDB. If your DBT workflows interact with Snowflake, then you will need to install the corresponding adapter dbt-snowflake. Remember that DBT has many adapters, as you can see right here. And again, you will need to install the corresponding ones that you use. That being said, once we have this virtual environment with DBT installed in it, the next step is to install Cosmos. For that, open requirements.txt and then you just need to put the following line to install the Astronomer Cosmos Python package with the following version, which is the latest one at the time I'm recording the video. All right, at this point, we have the Python virtual environment with dbt installed in it and we have Astronomer Cosmos installed as well. The next step is to put the Jeffel Shop dbt workflow into our Airflow environment. It's pretty simple. You just create a new folder out of the DAGs folder, so you can put it at the root directory of your local environment. So let's create a new folder called dbt. And then in that folder, you're gonna clone the repo corresponding to the Jevel Shop project on the DB. So if you go on the repo, then you click on code, and then you copy that link, and then you go back to your terminal, you go into dbt, and you type git clone, and then the repo. If you wait a little bit, you should be able to see under the dbt folder, the Jevel Shop DuckDB folder with the corresponding dbt workflow. With that, the next step is to open profiles.yml and here change the path to indicate where the file corresponding to our local DuckDB database will be. In our case, it is the following path which will be inside the Docker containers running our Airflow instance. A quick tip that you don't have to follow but I like to use it is to set up a Python virtual environment with Airflow installed so you get the auto-completion on your IDE. You don't have to, but if you do that, it will be easier for you when writing your DAGs, because keep in mind that Airflow will be installed in your Docker containers and not on your local machine. For that, it's pretty straightforward. I just use UV in that case. So you type UV and then verv in order to create the Python virtual environment. You can see that right here, dot verv. And then in that environment, you just need to run the command pip install dash r to install 
the package Astronomer Dash Cosmos, and that will automatically install Airflow as well. After that, you open the file .git ignore, and then you add .venv, as you don't want to version that. And last but not least, if you open a Python file, at the bottom right corner, you have here the Python binary that you want to use. And in that case, we want to use the Python binary that it is in our Python virtual environment. So this one. And that's it. So at this point, you have the auto completion for Cosmos and Airflow. Now it is time to transform our JFL shop DBT workflow into a beautiful Airflow DAG. Let's do that. So open the DAGs folder and then you can remove the example DAG right here and create a new Python file, mydag.py. From there, you need to do a few things. From Cosmos, you want to import the project config class. And then you create a new variable, let's say project config, with project config, and that takes one parameter, which is dbt project path, which is the path to your dbt project. And we're gonna define it into a variable let's say dbt project path with the following path. And then we use that variable right here. So what is this project config? Project config allows you to specify information about where your dbt project is located and project variables that should be used for rendering and execution. And there are many parameters that you can use. As you can see here on the following page, you have the dbt project path, which is the full path to your dbt project, but you also have the models relative path that might be useful for you to define where to find the dbt models, as well as the seed relative path that also might be useful for your seeds. And then you have the project name, some environment variables and dbt vars, and you have a project config example at the end that might be useful if you have a more complex use case. So now you have a better idea of what the project config is. Let's move on to the next step, which is to import profile config and then create another variable profile config with the profile config object. And this one takes a few parameters. The first one is the profile name, which is default. Then you can pass the target name, which is dev and then another parameter, which is profile mapping. As we use DuckDB, we need to import from Cosmos profiles, the DuckDB user password profile mapping. And then we use it here with the following parameters, a connection ID, which is the following variable, DuckDB con ID that we're gonna create in a second. And then profile args with the following values, the path to the DB, DB path, and then the schema, which is schema name. And again, we need to create those variables. So at the top of the file, just before dbt project path, you can create the following variables, dbdb con id, db path, and schema name. Don't forget to import OS as well. As we try to find the values we need for dbdb connection id and the schema name in the following environment variables. And if those variables do not exist, then we default to those values. All right, so now let me give you a much better explanation about what profile config is, because it's very important. Cosmos supports two methods of authenticating with your database, using your own dbt profiles.yml file or using Airflow connections via the Cosmos profile mappings. That's exactly what we are doing right now. So if you are already interacting with your database from Airflow and have a connection set up, then it's recommended to use a profile mapping to translate that Airflow connection to a dbt profile. This is because it's easier to maintain a single connection object in Airflow than it is to maintain a connection object in Airflow and a dbt profile in your dbt project. If you don't already have an Airflow connection, or if there is no readily available profile mapping for your database, you can use your own dbt profiles.yml file. Regardless of which method you use, you will need to tell Cosmos which profile and target name it should use. For example, here we specify that the profile name is default and the target name is dev, exactly as specified in the profiles.yml file. In addition, as we need to connect to DuckDB, we use the DuckDB user password profile mapping. And that relies on an Airflow connection that we're gonna create in a second so that we manage the DuckDB connection that dbt needs from Airflow. And Cosmos offers many different profile mappings according to which data warehouse or database you want to connect to. So for example, you have Athena, you have ClickHouse, you have Google Cloud, Databricks, and so on. Again, I strongly recommend you to look 
add the documentation, especially as profiles are super, super important. You can see here that you can customize the profile config per dbt node. You can also disable dbt event tracking and so on. There are many options that you have access to. Again, look at the documentation for that. To sum up, the profile config defines how to connect to your data warehouse. Speaking of that, we need to create the corresponding connection. So for that, you can open .env and then export the following Airflow connection. So that will create an Airflow connection with the name DuckDB default, with the connection type DuckDB, and then the path where the DuckDB file will be, and finally the schema, which is main, exactly as defined in the profile config. Now we have a better idea of what the profile config is. Let's move on to the next step, which is to define the execution config. So again, we create a new variable, execution config with the execution config object. And that takes one parameter, which is the dbt executable path. And in that case, we're going to put that into a variable as well, dbt executable path. And then we need to import the execution config at the top. So right here, after profile config, you import execution config. So now, what is execution config here? Well, Cosmos gives you the control over how your dbt project is executed when running in Airflow. And it does this by exposing an execution config class that you can configure as shown right here. And one of the most important parameters that this execution config class can take is the execution mode. So there are many different execution modes that you can find right here. By default, it is local. So that will run dbt commands using a local dbt installation. That's why we have installed dbt in a Python virtual environment. But you have other options such as virtual env, Docker, Kubernetes, AWS EKS, and so on. And if you wonder which execution mode you should use, well, take a look at this table where you can see the differences in terms of task duration, environment isolation, and Cosmos profile management. That being said, we still have to create the dbt executable path variable. So at the top of the file, just under dbt project path, you can create the following variable with the following value, which is the path to the dbt binary in the Python virtual environment. And then we are at the final step, which is to create the DAG. And to create the DAG, we will use a special class, which is dbt DAG. And that class allows you to translate a dbt workflow into a fully functional Airflow DAG. So right here, you can create a new variable, my DAG equals to dbt DAG. And that takes a few parameters such as the DAG ID, so let's say my DAG, and then the project config with underscore project config, the profile config with underscore profile config, the execution config with underscore execution config, and then some usual parameters that you can pass to any DAGs, such as the schedule, let's say at daily, maybe the start date, let's say January 1st, 2025, and finally max active tasks to one, so that we just execute one task at a time in that DAG. All right, so let's summarize what we've done so far. First, we have created a Python virtual environment in the Docker file in order to install dbt and the dbt.db adapter in it. Then we have installed Astronomer Cosmos in the requirements.txt file. Also, we have created a new DAG, mydag.py, and we have instantiated a project config object to indicate where the dbt workflow is in our case, it is under the folder dbt and jeffleshop.db. And then we have created a profile config object so that the dbt workflow can connect to the dbdb database using an Airflow connection. We have configured the execution config object so that the dbt project runs using a local dbt installation. And finally, we instantiate the dbt DAG so we translate the jeffleshop dbt workflow into a beautiful Airflow DAG. Now it is time to see if everything we've done so far works or not. So for that, you just need to go to the terminal and then run the command astro dev start. If you hit enter, and then that will take a few minutes, but at some point you should land on the Airflow user interface. And then if you go to DAGs, you should be able to see your DAG, click on it. And if you carefully take a look at the graph view, you have your Jeffel shop dbt workflow with beautiful tasks and task groups. So now let's see if all of that work. And we just need to turn on the toggle right here, then refresh the page. And as you can see, we are getting one DAG run. So let's click on it to see all the tasks 
getting executed. And you can see that raw order seeds is running. So let's wait until all the tasks successfully complete. After a few minutes, hopefully you should have everything in green as shown right here. And most importantly, you can see why Cosmos is so great because you have your dbt workflow with all the dbt models and everything just right here in the Airflow UI. Meaning if you want to take a look at the logs of a specific dbt model, for example, you just click on the task and on the right, you can see the logs of your dbt model. If you want to restart that one specifically, you just need to click on the task and then you clear the task instance and that will rerun all the downstream tasks that depend on this dbt model. So that's the beauty of Cosmos. If you are using dbt with Airflow, I don't see why you will not use Cosmos because it will save you a lot of time. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed that video and I see you for the next one. Take care.